welcome to the Firefly Tiny Homes Workshop. My name is Andy, and along with my wife Gina, and sometimes our teenage daughters, we build tiny homes in this big workshop attached to our own house. And uh, we're really excited to introduce you to this particular build, which we are calling Lumos. And it's a 28 foot trailer, eight and a half foot wide, so it's and 13 and a half foot tall, so it's legal to roll down the road in all 50 states and it uh, has a two foot bump out in the back. And as you can see uh, right here on the front, we've mixed a, a black metal with cedar accents, white trim, and uh, a few other touches here and there. And we think it's just really, really sharp. We've poured our heart and our soul into this particular build and we're really proud of it. And I'd love to show you the rest of it. Right up here at the front, uh, before we leave, you'll see the, we mounted the mini split right on the tongue of the trailer, which I think is a really good spot for it to live. Uh, we love mini splits. We think they're a very efficient and comfortable way to heat and cool uh, space. We have them in our own home. Over here in the entry area of the tiny house, you can see that we uh, try to maximize natural light in this tiny house as much as possible and uh, one way we did that was to put a sliding patio door lockable of course on the front and we've uh, added cedar around the entire entry and front window area and we also uh, went ahead and put uh, a flower box right under this window which you happen to look over when you're sitting at the workspace or bar or whatever you'll see when we get inside. Uh, if you continue along the back, you'll see that this particular 28 foot trailer has three 7 pound, 7,000 pound axles on it, which means this particular trailer is rated for up to 21,000 pounds, which means it's a beefy trailer. It can handle all of the weight of this tiny house and more. Around here in the back of the trailer, you can see that we uh, have a bump out that overhangs two feet which adds uh, even more space to a very large loft, which you'll see once we get inside. We added some cedar touches just to kind of dress up the back just a little bit, along with the black metal. Uh, here we have a regular household Renai water heater. It's runoff propane. It's the only appliance that requires propane in this particular build. So uh, we keep all propane or gas lines out of the living space, which I particularly like and, and helps my comfort level. And then down in this corner, we have our regular RV hookups. We have a 50 amp power, plenty of power for the uh, very energy efficient appliances and lighting and things that we included on this particular tiny house, your regular water inlet and a RV style uh, uh, sewer connection. Welcome to the inside of this particular tiny. Uh, we included this Pella sliding glass door, which I think operates just really beautifully. I'm very pleased with this particular unit. It includes uh, in between the glass shades, which are uh, extremely easy to operate, provide privacy, uh, light control, things like that, which is I think really important in a small space. So uh, just, just really pleased with the way that turned out. The combination of this six foot sliding patio door and two six foot by nearly four foot windows gives this living room space just a really open, airy feel. We really think it you know, helps bring the outside in. So hopefully this tiny ends up parked someplace amazing because that's exactly what we designed it for. Also included in this space is this uh, couch, which we bone personally on a couple of occasions and we think it's just one of the most brilliant uh, sofas out there. This section here rolls out and then pops up. So this becomes a, a bed or you know you can just have a really comfy, cozy ottoman for everyone on the sofa. And then uh, this J section here lifts up for uh, storage and there's really no lack of storage in this tiny because we know how important that is. Uh, and one of the storage features that we added in was a shoe cabinet. Our family uh, lived in a very small uh, RV situation, uh, traveled around for full time for a while, and we realized just how important it is to have a space for shoes to go 
when you walk into a tiny space. So we went ahead, added the shoe cabinet, can store shoes and other things, but it's right here in the entryway, ready to catch those items that would otherwise you'd be tripping over. This is also where we plan, you know, a section for you to mount a TV. Um, the operable part of the patio doors over there, so it's okay if the TV, you know, if you want to go really big or if you want one to fit just right here, we have outlets for that as well. As we move this way back into the tiny house, you'll see that we designed a very large kitchen for this size of the tiny house. Uh, a place to cook and to eat is just close to our hearts, and so we did not want to design a tiny little kitchen, even though it's a tiny house. So in this kitchen, we have uh, a space right here for um, two people to sit and eat in front of this large window where there happens to be flowers just waiting for you and hopefully a, uh, an amazing view. Um, uh, you could also, we put some outlets uh, down under there, USB uh, and everything. This could be a great spot to sit and work uh, during the day and to sit and eat in the breakfast, you know, in the morning or in the evening. Uh, we went ahead and in order to, to keep uh, gas out of the living space, we specced in a, an induction cooktop, which we've used uh, before. And uh, it's, we think it's better than the electric radiance, more energy efficient and uh, reacts a little closer to that what you might expect out of gas. So we think that's that this is a really nice addition to uh, this particular tiny house and then separate from that is a convection uh, oven. A regular, regular household uh, vent here which has a light and three-speed fan which is you know, very important to, in order to get uh, those cooking uh, smells and vapors and things like that out of a small space. Uh, also, maybe a good time to talk about the countertops. Uh, these countertops are concrete, handcrafted by Gina and I. Uh, very large amount of work and, uh, and care went into pouring these, grinding these, polishing these, sealing these, and so we think they turned out really great with these little uh, additions of some glass stones and things like that really a unique one-of-a-kind uh, countertop. Um, this is the spot that made sense for the electrical panel to go. Um, we didn't want it sitting out in the living room. It's not allowed to go in any wet space in the bathroom or a closet or anything like that uh, since this house is certified by NOAA, the National Organization of Alternative Housing. Uh, this is the spot that made sense for the electrical panel. And so since we didn't want you to have to uh, look at that or be you know kind of like have that in your face all the time but didn't want it uh, inaccessible at all I went ahead and uh, created this spice rack which is just mounted on a French cleat and it just comes on and off very easily and there is the electrical panel sitting right there and uh, above the two burner induction and the vent uh, we put a little open cabinet here which if you want a microwave, a microwave will fit in this space. Uh, if you don't want a microwave in your tiny house, this is a great spot for some larger items, bowls, pots, things like that. Uh, we do have as much ca cabinetry space as we possibly can. We put in doors and as many big drawers as we possibly can. You'll see that we also uh, went ahead and included, uh, just because we feel so strongly about cooking, uh, we went ahead and included a portable induction burner as well that if you're preparing a big meal that needs more than two burners you can put this uh, in various places around the kitchen or even if you have a nice deck and table outside there's an outlet out there you could plug it in and cook outside if you like uh, over on this side of the kitchen uh, we went ahead and put a uh, we think it's just a beautiful retro style black fridge which really goes nicely with this black and white kitchen it's uh, 10 cubic feet it's i think plenty of size you know uh but not too big just fits very nicely in here plenty of space and it, it happens to be elevated up uh, which gives you another nice big drawer uh, 
uh, for storage in this particular tank. As we move back further into the tiny house, you'll see that uh, the area under the loft, so part of the kitchen and the bathroom beyond, we went ahead and went, put LED strip lighting in. The bathroom is accessed through this custom handcrafted door that uh, I, Gina designed and I crafted, uh, and it matches the bookshelf and storage unit up in the loft, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Well, welcome to a not so tiny bathroom. As you enter the bathroom on this particular side, we uh, created space for a washer dryer combo unit with a storage cabinet above and uh, a very large storage drawer below. Over on this side, as you enter the bathroom, we've got a 24 inch vanity with two very large drawers. Again, more storage, mirrored medicine cabinet above. And then uh, just next to that, between that and the, the toilet, we went ahead and uh, custom built a full wardrobe. Full space for hanging clothes, lots of space for bins or, or boxes or folded you know, clothing below. Just beyond that is a regular dual flush household toilet, which is really nice. Then finally over on this side of the bathroom, we went and put a full tub shower unit. Uh, got this nice subway tile job, including a built-in nook for all your shower items and a, a nice Panasonic uh, vent fan, which can be switched to run on um, a small amount uh, continuously, which is paired with a passive air vent in the front of the tiny house uh, to provide that fresh air circulation, uh, which is so important in a small space. Now this is uh, right just a little under that five foot tub mark, but it's still big enough for someone six foot two like me to sit down and have a bath in. Most of you, probably a little bit shorter than me. This is a luxurious deep tub for a tiny house. All right, back out here in the stairway up to the loft, we went ahead and created uh, even more custom storage. So there's eight drawers here under the stairs and a uh, little open cabinet up here, which is uh, perfect for mugs and glasses and things like that. Some of these drawers are big and wide and full extension slides, uh, easy access. And then uh, this one is what we kind of consider the pantry with four drawers. Uh, easy to load with your cans or bags with uh, food items and things like that. The loft in this particular tiny is extra large. It's nearly 16 feet deep and the full width of the tiny house. It's separated from the rest of the living space by this uh, custom design storage unit here. And we went ahead and put in extremely nice very soft and cozy carpet and padding. So you can crawl around in this large space without hurting your knees and things like that. There's lots of options up here. Uh, we put in outlets in uh, a couple different locations so that you could put the bed in the back, uh, which is where Gina likes it. Feels nice and cozy back there to her. Uh, but we also put in outlets uh, over here in between the two windows if that's uh, where you would rather have your bed and kind of have that cross breeze and see you know out the windows as well so up in this loft there's plenty of space to lounge to put uh, beanbag chairs or even a, a sofa without legs it's also a good time while we're up here to talk about lighting uh, all the main uh, LED lights in the ceiling are on dimmers so you can dim them, go a little bit darker, or leave them on full blast. Uh, also here in the loft, one of Gina's uh, favorite features is the fairy lights, which are on a switch. So you can turn them off and on. 
in the main area, we went ahead and put sort of a, a modern industrial uh, fan light combo. It's a fandelier, so the blades retract and disappear when not in use, which I think feels really nice going up and down the stairs. Not that they're anywhere close uh, to hitting you on the stairs, but it just sort of feels nice that they're not in your eye line and sort of uh, feeling like they're in your face. But as soon as you turn that on, the blades come out and you get a really nice air circulation all throughout the tiny house. Thanks for joining us on this tour. It is our passion to design and build durable, beautiful, and comfortable spaces. We love to do it in this tiny house form factor.